This is Michael from Science Out There. This is the third video in a series about Aurora photography and making time lapses. Before this, I demonstrated taking Aurora photos with any camera and some tips for acquiring good image sequences and avoiding some pitfalls. This time, we're going to make a time lapse from a sequence of RAW files using Adobe Camera Raw, Adobe After Effects, and Media Encoder. This method is definitely the most expensive one because it does require Creative Cloud. You're going to be going from Photoshop to After Effects and then probably Premiere in the end. All right, so let's get started with a really simple 8 bits per channel time lapse. What I mean by that is that it's just a traditional video like any other you'd see on YouTube or most of the time watching on TV. This will be a standard time lapse using the method that I like. And so what we're first gonna do is get all of our raw files into the same folder. These are the sequential files that I took right out of my camera, just the raw files. I've taken the JPEGs away and put them in another folder. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select all and I actually need to launch Photoshop. Now, some people who are familiar with using After Effects probably already know that you can take a raw image sequence and take it right into After Effects and just output a video file that way. And that's fine. You can totally do that. The reason I don't like to go directly to After Effects is that it only lets you or seems to let you manipulate the first image in the image sequence. That is to say, if you want to make some changes, you're only looking at the first one, and it's not necessarily the one that I want to make changes based on, because there might be something brighter or something happening later in the sequence that I'm more concerned about than the first image. And Aurora time lapses are especially like this. You might have a display that starts out a little weak, and then later on becomes much brighter. So I want to make changes based off the brightest image in my time lapse sequence. So what I've done is I've dragged and dropped the camera raw files right onto Adobe Photoshop. This does take a few minutes to load. So here I am looking at the second image in the sequence. The first image is really blurry and uh, I don't wanna use that one, so I'm gonna delete it. That might've been a test shot or maybe I just accidentally clicked the shutter while I was setting up. Stuff like that happens and this gives you a chance to delete the first one. I am going to go through my list of images and find the one that I think is the brightest in the sequence. I like to take Aurora photos with a daylight white balance. From there, I like to just bump the temperature a little blue and the tint a tiny bit green. And that usually is right where I like it. Next thing I'm gonna do is increase the exposure until it looks like I'm starting to lose some highlights in those brighter areas in the middle. All right, I'm gonna bump just a little bit of clarity and a little bit of dehaze just to sharpen things up a little bit. I've got a nice sharp horizon and I've got nice pinpoint like stars and that's what you like to see. Bump the vibrance and saturation just a little bit. There's always someone who's gonna say, well, the Aurora don't look like that in person and, and they're right, especially when it's low on the horizon like this. Uh, Aurora tend to appear to the eyes as being sort of a ghostly green, like a whitish green. It's kind of hard to describe. Uh, once you see it, You'll, you'll know what I mean, but uh, it's not as green as it appears in photographs, at least until it's directly overhead and really bright. And then it's just an obvious green. But cameras do pick up a much more vibrant green from Aurora, especially when it's dimmer and lower on the horizon. The Aurora really are this color, it's just dim, so our eyes don't necessarily register at that color as brightly all of the time. Not unless it's right overhead and really bright, then it is. So by default, Camera Raw does introduce a little bit of color noise reduction. I'm gonna zoom right in and drop this down to zero. And you can see there's lots of splotchy red, green, and blue in there. So I wanna just bump this up until there's just a regular noise pattern now and not a color noise pattern. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for noise reduction. When it comes to your final output being video, you actually want to reduce the noise a little bit more than you might with a regular photograph. Uh, however, I'm gonna show you another trick later that helps a ton. For right now, we're just gonna bump this up a little bit. We don't want our output video file dedicating a bunch of its bitrate to just reproducing this pattern noise. So as much of that as we can remove, the better. That'll make the final output look a lot nicer on like YouTube, for example. There is a little bit of vignette that I am going to pull out it looks, looks a little better. We kind of brightened it around the edges. All right, and then depending on what I'm working with, I might play with the curves a little bit, you know, brighten up the shadows. Uh, I, I deliberately wanted to make this just a silhouette of this alpine horizon that we had, and then have the Aurora just 
dancing behind it just like this. Yeah, this all happened in twilight. Uh, there was still a little bit of daylight left over and we had this nice bright aurora display. And it turns out that was the only time it was a nice bright aurora display. It just happened right at twilight and then within an hour it was all done. Okay, so I'm gonna select all of the images in my sequence. That's a control A. And then I'm gonna use this synchronize button and synchronize all settings. Uh, some other changes that you could do are cropping it at this stage, which you don't have to do. But maybe more importantly, you want to level the horizon using crop and rotate. Uh, but uh, this one, it looks like I have a pretty level horizon and I'm pretty happy with it. All right, so once I'm satisfied that I think my image sequence is ready, I'm going to select all and then save as a JPEG. And uh, for the purposes of this, I'm gonna use a Rec 709 PQ color space. Um, Adobe Color works fine too. I just, I like to use the broadcast standards. Uh, and this one's gonna be eight bits per channel. Uh, we're doing a JPEG with a maximum quality, uh, an image sequence that's gonna be whatever the name of my time lapse is, plus a four digit serial number. And I'm gonna reset this to zero. So now every image in the sequence is going to be from zero to whatever. It just has to be in order for After Effects to work. So as long as that's the case, it'll be fine. Now I just need to select a folder to save the images to. And I've created a JPEG file inside of my Twilight time-lapse sequence. I'm gonna select that and hit save. And now it's gonna save my images. And this may take anywhere from five to 10 minutes. I mentioned earlier that I didn't like going directly to After Effects this way. Every time you output your After Effects sequence, it does this exact same step over and over again where it turns the raw file into a JPEG or something else and then creates the video file. So if you mess something up on your After Effects video, then you have to export it again. It does this long process over and over. I'm skipping that part by just going straight from raw to JPEG and then bringing it into After Effects. Then there is no raw to JPEG or raw to whatever processing that has to occur every single time. I'm just doing this once based on being satisfied with the image sequence itself. And later on I can tweak and mess with the actual video output that comes out. Second thing, sometimes you have a JPEG sequence from your camera that rolls over the odometer, so to speak, like it'll go 9998, 9999. 000. Before you say, ah, 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 there's this other program that, yes, I know, just hold, hold the phone <laughs> one second. So what I like to do is take the images that were say 9000 through 9999, do those first, and then save those with a sequence number of starting with zero. So it'll do the first thousand images that way. And then I'll go in and do 000 through 100 or whatever. I'll even copy one of the XMP files for the RAWs from the one sequence. It's kind of complicated, but you're just batch processing the first group of images that rolled over and then coming back and doing the second group of images after it rolled over. And then Adobe Camera Raw just helps you out and you know continues the sequence from 1001 and onward, whatever. All right, so we've saved all of our images from Adobe Camera Raw to JPEG, and now I have a JPEG sequence uh, on my drive. Now it's time to load After Effects. All right, so I have After Effects ready to go. I'm gonna do a new project and then a new composition. And for my composition settings, uh, I am going to use a preset that I've pre-created called 1080p 23976. You can also do a 4K one just like it, which is gonna be 3840 by 2160, but all else remains the same. Frame rate is gonna be exactly 23.976. That's important, and you wanna make sure that's consistent across the board. And we're going to have a duration of three minutes. All right, so I'm gonna make a change to the project, project settings, I'm gonna go into color, and I want eight bits per channel. I'm gonna do Rec 709. I like to create my images in the same profile, the same color space that I'm rendering my video. Import, file. I'm gonna find my JPEG sequence and I'm gonna select the first one in the line, which is 000. I'm gonna make sure importer JPEG sequence is checked and you don't need alphabetical order unless you have some sort of a wonky naming scheme that you've created. But for my numbered one, this is gonna work just fine. So I select just the first image and there's my composition. After you've imported your image sequence, you're gonna right click over it and then click interpret footage and then main. And what we need to do here is, well, let me explain. When you import 
an image sequence, it assumes the frame rate is gonna be 30 FPS. But what we need to do is make sure that it matches our composition. We set our composition to 23976, and for whatever reason, and After Effects' ultimate wisdom, when you import an image sequence, it just always assumes 30 FPS. But we want it to be 23.976. We need it to match. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you wanna match all the way through. So 23976 for your composition, 23.976 for your image sequence. And that goes the same if you're gonna do 24 across the board or 30 or 59.94 or 60. Just make sure it's consistent. Your composition, and your image sequence interpreter needs to be the same. So you'll see that right here. All right, I'm gonna drag this to my timeline and we're gonna scooch this over. And you're gonna notice this is way too big. My image file is probably good enough or just about good enough for a 6K or an 8K video file if I wanted to, but I've got a little 1080p thing here. So we wanna resize this. And you'll notice that I can stretch and bend it any way I want. If I just hold down the shift key while I'm manipulating it, then it'll hold the same aspect ratio as the original. And there we go. So I'm gonna zoom back in. Actually, I'm gonna do a fit, and there's our sequence. And I've got it just about where I want it. I can move this around. There's a lot of room to manipulate this image uh, to get the best composition because the image is so huge compared to the video file. So now I've got my image roughly centered where I want it, want it to be, sort of following the rule of thirds, sort of. <laughs> Uh, eh, maybe right there is better. So now we've got our image sequence tiled right onto this 1080p frame. And if I hit play, I can even see a little bit of a preview of what it's gonna look like when I output the file. And that seems pretty good to me. Let's make this fit. So we got a nice dancing Twilight Aurora time-lapse. So now I want to export this as an actual video file. So I'm gonna click on my working space. I'm gonna go File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. So now we've invoked our third Creative Cloud program. All right, for this one, I'm going to use the built-in preset for H.264 and high quality 1080p HD. And now I'm gonna dump the file to my Twilight folder and I'm gonna call it Twilight Aurora. So when we're exporting an After Effects video where it's JPEG files directly to video, you'll notice it moves quite a bit faster than if it was just a raw sequence. All right, so our file encoding is done. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the file, play it back. And let's have a watch. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna do the same thing over again, but this time in high dynamic range.